What's up, everybody? <clears throat> Fuck. Welcome <laughs> to another episode of the Excellent Podcast. I'm your cinematic host, Stefan Whitaker, head honcho of SW Films. And today we have a very special guest on this very early morning, <laughs> at least for me. Uh, we have someone who I've collaborated with a lot when I was living back in Indiana. She is such a trendsetter, such a hard worker, such a artist. And I'm so happy that I could have her on the podcast. A fun fact for everybody, she was actually the very first person and the only person to be uh, to shoot the first few videos for No Sweat Pimp, believe it or not. And I have her on the podcast today to talk about all of the incredible and amazing things that she's done. She's came so far uh, from where I first knew her, where we first met. And I'm super excited to have Trinity Treft here today on the podcast. Trinity Treft, how are you doing? First and foremost, Man, how are you? I am amazing. Amazing. I love it. That's Things great. are going I, so great right now. I, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm glad that you're doing well. For everyone who's listening and watching on the podcast right now, I just woke up not too long ago. So uh, please ignore me looking kind of crazy or sounding crazy. But regardless, we are here on the podcast to interview Trinity. And uh, once again, thank you for being on the podcast today. Um, we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Specifically, our topic today is the mantra that I've seen you post a lot on social media. Nobody cares work harder I, I definitely have questions for you on that specific mantra of yourself how you got that and what that means to you um and just everything about your business focus creations focus films everything that's been going on for yourself so i'm super excited to have you on here but uh don't let me tell about the excellence you please speak to your excellence let everybody know who you are and what you do well first i want to thank you for asking me to hop on here real quick steph it's been way too long since we've been able oh, to yeah. connect so oh, I appreciate yeah. this opportunity. It's good to see you. It's good to see you doing well. And I'm excited to see what all unfolds for you with this. Absolutely. Um, beyond that, so nobody cares, work harder. Let's just dive right into that. Uh, that just kind of right. just came about one day, man. Um, Adam, the influence, and I, we obviously we do a lot of work together. And we were both kind of in this transitional period, you know, where it was mind over matter. You know, you got to get out of your uh, your mental space and and push through anything that's going on in, in regular life and make your creative life happen. And any creative should be able to kind of relate to that. You know, we all have our ups and downs, our highs and lows and pushing through that for the creative purposes. Man, do it for the art, you know. But uh, like nobody cares. Work harder is uh, basically... It's it's exactly what it sounds like. Nobody cares until you make it. So everybody says, you know, oh, overnight success, overnight success. It happened overnight. You know, as well as I do, that's not true. It never happens overnight. There's yeah. decades sometimes that go into it before you get that overnight success. So mm -hmm. you just got to push through, push through the BS, push through whatever, you know, community over competition crap is going on. You oh, got to. Yeah push through your hurdles and your obstacles because nobody cares. Nobody cares about the fallbacks. Nobody cares about the setbacks. You got to push through and work harder. Um, we actually have a new line for the clothing line that will be dropping. Nobody cares. Worked harder here very go. soon. So awesome. that's, it all kind of ties in together. I like that. I really like that. I like how, I like how you're making it, especially into just, a brand and well just as that monster to really stick with you so with that particular since we're going to hop into this topic like basically with this mantra like when did it start to apply to you well first and foremost before we do that let's give an introduction of who you are first like who right. you are what you do it like it's a speak to your excellence what like let my audience know and let your audience know remind them who you are so focus creations uh was formed roughly a decade ago, 10, 12 years ago, uh, I was in high school, you know, just kind of picking up a camera in the very beginning. And, you know, it just kind of kind of became who I am. You know, it's it's part of my identity now. And about almost two years ago now, my fiance, Ashley, she kind of 
stepped into the business with me. And at that point in time, things kind of morphed and changed and grew. I kind of was able to focus more on the type of work that I enjoy rather than just shooting to make money. And at that point in time, you know, that's when things really, really started to take off. Uh, I got my passion back, you know, I had been overseas for a while and had just been kind of doing me and then came back and we got into it together and it just sparked this whole new level of inspiration for her and I both. Um, It definitely brought us closer together as well. So I've actually been focusing on my video work, which I know you're familiar with Um, and kind of leaning more in towards commercial work here lately for my side of the business. Um, Ashley, actually, this is low key. We actually just found out this morning, but we just got the cover of a magazine. Oh, Um, wow. Congratulations. That was all Ash. Um, So she's killing (laughs) it as well. Um, But yeah, we're just, you know, we're pushing towards, doing what we actually love to do rather than just doing what we can do. Uh, so it's a really exciting time for us right now. You know, we're, we're passionate, we're inspired, and we've got a team that is just ever growing. And it's so amazing to just watch it all evolve right now. It's a, it's a really exciting time. That's awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad to see that you've been and hear that you've been doing so much amazing things and that's all what we're going to be talking about on the podcast and just how the upbringing came for that. But let's hop back into the topic. So nobody cares, work harder. When did that, when did that mantra, when did that mantra come in for you? Like when did that actually start to become kind of a thing where you just had to really apply that for yourself? Like when was the the first moment that you applied it for yourself? Honestly, it's, it's relatively fresh. So I would say within the last, like, four to six months, maybe. Um, I, I battle with some depression and some anxiety and have had, you know, a hard time separating personal life and, you know, the creative life and being able to mm-hmm. still maintain that creative passion when, you know, my mental health is is struggling. So Adam, my, my friend, Adam, he deals with the same thing, you know, personal life just kind of brings you down sometimes and it's it's hard to push through that so it was just kind of something that I said to him one day you know hey man nobody cares you know work harder and then Mm -hmm. he said it back to me one day and then I said it back to him one day and from there it just kind of evolved into this like mantra you know like nobody cares work harder you just have to push through and we have goals, you know, that we want to attain. We have a vision, a game plan, a path. We have a three-year plan. And in order to attain those goals, you have to push through anything, any obstacle that comes through. So you can't, you can't cry and complain on the sidelines, you know, you got to get in there and get dirty. So absolutely really how it all kind of just started. It was just, it was just wise words to a friend. And then it became, (laughs) you know, the whole mantra. Yeah, I like that because I definitely I remember seeing it on social media and it was interesting, right? Because like, you know how a lot of creatives, especially on social media, and we and we'll definitely talk about social media presence, but a lot of people sometimes <clears throat> might post something and then next thing you know, we'll see Trinity Chef. Nobody cares, work harder. <laughs> Somebody's like, yo. <laughs> But I, just, I just did something really dope. What are you talking about? Not in this. No, yeah, I do care though. I care about the. I care about the success. <laughs> absolutely, like one hundred percent. But I, that's more based on like to control to control your. Oh yeah, I think I think it's yeah, yeah. what what it means to me at least is it means like the idea, especially now that you have broken it down, like more of the idea of like uh, to kind of keep yourself in check, to keep yourself going, because you know there's a lot of people who sometimes will stay with that one thing that they did and they will only talk about and sell, try to celebrate that one thing that they've did and they haven't done anything else new. And, you know, to me, that's like, that's not as a creative, as an entrepreneur or whatever, that's not, that's not something that you should do. Like, you know, there, there's a, there's this idea from uh fuck, what's his name? I'm forgetting. Um, I, my, it's, it's sad because my friend works for this guy and I can't remember this dude's name, but this guy had said on a podcast one time, celebrate your wins for 24 hours. And I really like that because 
it's like, yeah, you know, I don't want to, you know, if I, if I stay celebrating this one thing that I did for days or weeks or months or years, then it's like, you lose sight. I lose sight and I don't ever, I don't ever grow from that, you know? And, and, uh, there's the idea of like, okay, you know, in a, in a technical way, it's like, okay, somebody, somebody cares, people care, but it's like, yeah, yo, absolutely. you're not, it's like, no, it's like, you're not, you're not working much harder past that, that you've already done. Um, right. And, you know, that's the thing. I think I think it's a mental check for that person. Um, and that's kind of what I see from nobody cares work harder because it's like, yeah, man, you can't you can't get stuck, you know, thinking that that one thing is is all you need or all all you know, it's just not that's just not how it's going to go. So that's how I believe it, too. Like, you know, that's how I look at it now, too, especially after all the things that I've done recently. It's like, OK, great. You know, the now, you know, I definitely have celebrated, had fun. But now it's like, all right, let's move on to the next thing. The next big thing or the next few things, especially what I've been thinking about that a lot recently for myself is is like, all right, you know, I got these few big projects that I was a part of. Now I got a few more that is coming out. And now it's like, okay, now I'm thinking about what's happening for the next year or two. Exactly. Uh, as exactly. far as like what to push out. So I, I love that. I love that mantra. Has there um with with that with the with the mantra, nobody cares, work harder and stuff like that. Like, have you when you've posted it, kind of back to that social media thing, have when you've posted, have people probably taken that wrong at all? <laughs> as far as on social you know, media. I Nobody's actually reached out or specifically said anything. Um, so if they have, I mean, if the shoe fits, wear it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm at a place yeah. right now where that's that's part of the mantra, too. Like, nobody cares, work harder. kind of resonates with the whole idea of, you know, I'm not in competition with anyone. You know, yeah. it's the only competition I have is who I was today or yesterday. You know, I just want to better myself every day. I want to educate myself every day. I want to continue to grow in my own craft and in my own field um, along with my team. You know, like I said, we're building a pretty, pretty astounding team right now. It's a lot of hands on deck and we're just yeah. continuing to build and grow. So, I mean, like, it's just, like you said, it's a self check. It's not, it's not aimed or directed. It's not shots fired at, at anyone for any reason ever. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just, you know, here's the ceiling. What's next? How do you break through that ceiling? So absolutely. If, if anyone has taken it personal, I mean, that's that's behind that's the scenes. I have no idea. <laughs> right. That's great. So all right, let's let's hop into the to the to the beginning. Let's go back to the start. How did you get into photography? How did you get into this entire creative space? Uh honestly, there was two key elements to it. Um when I was young, my mom traveled and I did not live with her full time. So when I would go visit her, she would always be somewhere new. So I was always, you know, getting new culture and new experiences. Um, and that's kind of what started, you know, the camera in the hand. It was, you mm -hmm. know, making memories and being able to save those moments. Um, and then, like I said, in high school, you know, I was on yearbook and all that good stuff. Uh, so that kind of started just, you know, the idea of the camera in my hand. Wait, then, you were taking photos of people in the yearbook? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, I, wow. That's cool. I never yeah, knew that. That's dope. dope. <laughs> yeah. How was that? Um, that was, you know, let's not talk about how my work <laughs> was back then because it was very mediocre. Uh, but it was the growth, experience. the growth is so important. The growth is huge. That's cool. That's cool that it like started from that. That's I, I like that. That's cool. Yeah. So, I mean, traveling, obviously, you know, is a huge inspiration for me. Um, always has been a big part of who I am and how I perceive the world. And I think being able to do that with a camera in my hand just kind of gives a piece of me to everyone else, you know? Yeah. So that's started it. And then I just realized I could make a life out of this. You know, I love doing it. It is a sustainable life. And especially right now in this time and day, you know, entrepreneurs and creatives are heavier than ever and although that does mean that there's a more dense industry mm -hmm. nobody cares to work harder you just gotta push through you, you, <laughs> right. you gotta improve and be better and just keep going exactly you have to individualize yourself and, and make yourself stand out and especially yeah. in the photography world though that is that is tough <laughs> you know um photography is such a oversaturated market everywhere i feel like but we'll get to that soon but 
as far as you individualizing yourself, you created focus, created focus creations, focus with a pH, everybody focus with the fucking pH. All right. I, I want to ask you, how, how did you become to create focus? So like you obviously talked about, you know, you um, wanting to do this full time, like before you really hopped into photography full time, was there ever any other interests that you had that you thought maybe you could compensate yourself from or just maybe another creative interest? before photography do no like it's okay. always been the camera i dabble in like writing a little bit but nothing too serious never took it serious um that's just kind of like a, a mental health thing for me i'll just mm-hmm. write a little bit in there i'm not artistically inclined at all i can't draw i can't paint i can't do any of that um yeah well, no not really and the nine to five lifestyle just does not work with me like mm-hmm. i'm just it, it's it's a no-go for me so yeah. the day you know that it kind of clicked that you can build a life with a camera in your hand man it was game over after that yeah just went all the way in and like you said you got yourself into focus i want to ha- i want to ask how did you how did you create that brand and and when too when when was the time where you decided to to really go all in and like individualizing yourself and making a brand out of out of your work so I uh, started with photography only um, back in high school and I was in yearbook, like I said, and started doing like some senior portraits for some of the people in my classes and things like that. And at that point in time, I formed the name in focus photography, um, PH still for focus. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was cool for a little while, you know, things were fine. Um, and then as I morphed and grew, you know, years on down the road, I I hit a point where I was like, okay, you know, this is, this is just lacking something. It's, it's niched out to just photography and I'm interested in video work. You know, I want to do more than just this. And while in focus photography was a great place to start, I had reached that ceiling. Mm -hmm. Um, So I rebranded a few years ago. And when I rebranded, I LLC'd and did all that nice stuff. Um, And I wanted a company name that would, be something I could branch out off and be able to have different, different types of categories, you know, diversify the income. So we have focus creations is the company. And then obviously I've focused films. I've focused clothing co focus photography. We have a group on Facebook for uh, boudoir clients. That's called risque by focus creations. Um, So focus creations just kind of encompasses everything that we do uh we create you know and we create with focus and with a purpose so that's kind of how it morphed and grew and changed yeah that's great yeah you've added so much different kind of content to focus you know and 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 especially i think when we met um which i guess let me talk to the audience let them know how we met first and foremost so we met in 2017 and well, we had kind of knew about each other before then. I think we, yeah, I think via I had, social media. via social media, I knew about you, I think through when I was in film school and then I came home and I think at that time you were traveling, you were doing like a whole lot of traveling and stuff like that. You were, you were all over the place. I can remember Thailand to fucking Chernobyl, crazy shit. Right. And um, yeah, 2017, I was like, yo. Um, I, th- I, t- I think I let you know, I was like, I'm starting SW film, starting my own film production company. And I need some photos done to, you know, to kind of brand off this very beginning of SW film. So for all of my listeners who already know me or new people, you know, um, if you check back on some of old SW film stuff on Facebook or Instagram, those photos we i forget where we went to but we went to some really dope ass place i don't know if it was an art we went to some place that i definitely don't remember where the hell it's at but it was a really cool place and you know basically gave me some a photo shoot over there and um that's how we met and then i think from there it just really kind of spiraled into you know we we messed well creatively and then personally as well and then it and then it came to where eventually no sweat pimp came around and then we collaborated collaborated heavily on that but um at the time yeah at the time i think i knew that you did you had done video i think even prior to us meeting or yeah. before yeah before us actually meeting um 
but but back that back then I think maybe photography was like still like a heavy focus, a main yeah, focus, it obviously for you. Absolutely. Um what what made you want to like shift into all of these different kinds of um brands i mean obviously it might go into like you having one just more interest in other things besides just photography but did it almost become like a lucrative situation did you like did you kind of feel like financially there was better options or better uh like, more weight i feel like it was kind of 50 50 you know i like to i tell myself all the time you know you got to find ways to diversify the income um and part of that is the oversaturation of the market uh, especially here in a smaller, a smaller environment, a smaller industry. Um, it's really dense here, as you very well know. Indiana. Uh, yep. so diversify <laughs> the income, you know, just find new avenues that you can create wealth through that same concept mm -hmm. um, is one half of it. And the other half of it came into just kind of wanting to push myself still, you know, I'm really big on wanting to continue to grow. You know, if I'm not if I'm not pushing myself to learn something or to expand my horizons regularly, then I feel like I'm letting my own self down as well yeah. as, you know, my business. Um, so it, it kind of falls into both of those categories, you know, um, the video side of things I think was always there. You know, mm -hmm. I started out just doing a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. And now I feel like I probably personally do more video than I do photo work. I still love photography. That's still a huge passion of mine. Um, but the video work is more challenging for me right now. You know, it's pushing me to educate further. It's pushing me to learn more. And I personally thrive in that environment, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, absolutely. I would say it comes down to those two things. Yeah. And I think too, now that you've also added more people into the, into the business, like you kind of had, like Ashley's been doing a lot of photography, like a lot more taking over that side. You know what I mean? I can see that. And I think that's definitely like a good, just business idea of like, you know, you kind of, it's like once you move over into that different space that you want to be in, in the company, and you just kind of have someone else still helm over that space. So there's still lots of all that income is still coming in at the same time. Um, one thing I want to ask for you is the focus. Like I, I know besides it just being, uh, the name, like I know there has to be a, a certain kind of meaning for it for you, especially with the pH maybe. Um, how did, what does that focus mean for you? What made you want to like, just besides the idea of a camera, uh, what, what does that really mean for you to be in focus? So obviously the pH comes from like photography because originally it was in focus photography. Um, so that was just a little play on words there. Mm -hmm. Um, but focus for me, I mean, honestly, like it's kind of my identity now, you know, like. Will you, will people come up to you in stores and be like, yo, it's focus. They, <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're focused, right. And I'm like, yeah, man, I am, you know, um, that's funny. But it's just, it's a constant reminder, you know, it's, it's not just the creative life, you know, there's so much that happens on a day to day and you have to be able to focus. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, chin up, focus, you know, what's, what's the first task? What's the first thing that needs to be done in order to get to where you need to be, whether that's, you know, a project that you're working on or a personal thing that you're going through, you know, there's steps, there's layers, there's levels. And you can't get to point C without getting through A and B. So you have to focus. Um, it just comes down to who I am at the end of the day. You know, it's it's a huge part of who I am now. It's definitely an identity for me, um, yeah. which is kind of kind of interesting, you know, to kind of embody your own brand is is <laughs> it's crazy, right? Yeah, it crazy. is. It's, it's kind of surreal from time to time. Um, but I love it, dude. And I really hope that the team just continues to expand and grow. And I hope that Focus Creations takes over the damn world. Right. Does it does it seem like is there a difference between Trinity Treft and Focus? Is there a difference between those two entities? Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what are the differences? <laughs> So Trinity is a little bit more private and reserved, obviously, like that's those those are the personal moments, you know, focus is it embodies who I am as a creative, which is a big part of me, but it's definitely not all of me. You know, I still exist yeah. outside of the creative world, but 
that is a huge part of who I am and a huge part of who I want to be. So. Absolutely. And I, and I get that completely. We're definitely going to delve into that conversation just of how to kind of separate yourself from the work, from the personal life, which is an interesting, which is a question for you. Def, I would like to know, because all of the people who I bring on here on this podcast and people who I speak to, everybody should know by now, well, this is the fourth or fifth episode. Um, and at least people who just have followed me, I'm interested in talking to people who I've, who I have either worked with or one that I want to know more about and, and everything like that. I watch everybody's, everybody's excellence as much as sometimes it may not seem like I'm watching people's shit, but I watch people's shit because why not? I support folks. Right. Um, you know, and you know, uh, some of that, some of the stuff can be inspiring sometimes, or some of it can just be interesting. My, my question for you though, is we, you talked about a lot of with the, with the idea of kind of separating yourself from the work and, and life, you know, a lot of creatives, we like to bring our personal lives and stuff into our work, you know, and I want to ask how, how does your personal emotion and stuff that you've gone through, how does that fit into your work? And, and where does that, where does that help you positively in your work? Oh, that's easy, man. So I do a lot of passion projects. Um, I actually, the separation really just comes from like, who I am as a person, but my, my personal life definitely 100% is intuitive with what happens with focus. Um, passion projects are nonstop for me. I'll be going through something personal and need to find a way to release that, you know, to either process it or move on from it or release that into the world. And that's where focus comes in. Um, I'll just give you a a quick example that I can just think of off the top of my head. Um, I had a grandparent pass away recently, a few months ago. Condolences. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and didn't really know how to navigate it, you know, in the personal life. Um, so we brought the camera in, you know, and that moment, you know, being able to take some, some photos that, the outside world might not know the correlation to, you know, they just see this art and they see the work. Um, But for me as an, as an artist and as a creative being able to express how I felt through the creative field um, helped me to be able to navigate that personal moment in time. Um, And I do that a lot, you know, whether it's, Mm -hmm depression or anxiety or something really good, you know, you know, maybe I have a huge success that I want to share. I will go out and I'll take, Ashley will take portraits of me or like the video we shot, um, the commercial you shot for me in Gary, Mm -hmm. Indiana years ago. Um, it's, it's a big part of what I do bringing in passion projects like that. Um, and I don't think a lot of people really do see the correlation necessarily, but that's okay. You know, it's, it's a passion project for me. It's for me to be able to express how I feel. Uh, and if you resonate with it, you do. If you don't, you don't, you know, um, right. not everything's going to hit a chord with everyone and that's okay. But yeah, I definitely would say passion projects, 100% man through and through that's Absolutely. what his camera in my hand. That is what has kept me pushing. And that's what's, definitely saved my life man art saved my life on more than one count absolutely i mean i think yeah artists do it in so many different ways i mean i mean really no sweat pimp was like that for me you know which is which is interesting because no sweat pimp is not it's not the normal platform or medium that you know that i work in but it was just i just decided at one point uh that i was like okay i i want to just go ahead and just talk about all these things that I've kind of just have held in in the past four or five years at that time and uh even in in films now as as I get as I continue to kind of elevate in my space is definitely you know getting more into writing stories and stuff like that that kind of maybe apply to um my emotions but especially now though especially now I think a lot of the stuff that I've written have been has been through through my emotions, but also others as well, you know, like 
my my newest short film is like that my new short film definitely is not based off of my perspective well it is kind of based off my perspective a little bit but like it is is definitely shown through the perspective of someone who's who's in the film in this particular film it's more based off of their perspective or at least what i think about it or what i've observed from it um and then even my film sweet mirage you know i was in a relationship at that time i'm not in that relationship anymore i still got much respect and love to that person who was in the film and who's my ex and everything. But like it at the time, that was such a personal thing to do, you know, is to really, and I want to delve into that for you as well. Like for me, when I did that, I didn't realize in the moment how, (laughs) how detrimental that could probably be to my emotions if, if shit didn't go well, (laughs) you know what I mean? And like, it definitely was because, you know, the film released, the film released, and I've told this story many times, but the film released on, um, it released on the day that we broke up, actually. And that was such a, like, crazy thing. But it also, not only did it release on the day we broke up, but we were we were together that day, you know, and we were celebrating the release together. But it was, but outside of that, we had to kind of deal with that particular situation. And, you know, this is, this this podcast is my platform, so I feel free to talk about whatever the fuck. Um, But like this, that moment, it was such a it was such a sad and heavy moment (laughs) for me at the time. Now, now, yeah, you know, now I've kind of I've gotten over it. You know, now now it's like, you know, I've had other things happen outside of that. And I had to really go through that lesson uh, and everything and move up from it. But with that, I, I ask, like, has there been some things that you've put into your work personally that maybe was maybe just a little too heavy for you to like? not necessarily heavy for anyone else to deal with, you know, because like you said, not a lot of people will necessarily understand, you know, um, some of those things you might put in there. But do you think that sometimes some of the stuff that you put into your work personally have been maybe a little too, it's a little bit too much weight to to bear for yourself, even to like look back at that work? Honestly, for me, I'm going to say no. Uh, For me, it's usually like a really, a really good healing tool. Um, Mm -hmm. Good, bad or indifferent, you know, whatever the emotion or whatever the situation may be. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's always been kind of a way for me to process and evolve through those stages or those phases or however you'd like to word it. Um, mm-hmm. But no, I like that I can look back and know, you know, that's who I was then. And this is what was going on. And this is what I learned from it. And this is how I grew. And if, if you look at, you know, any of my work in order, you know, you're, you're going to see the growth just quality wise, but you're going to see the growth as a person as well. If you pay attention, Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm very raw and I'm very vulnerable and I'm not afraid to put myself into my work. Um, so I'm not afraid, you know, to show the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, and I think that that's important for creatives to be able to add that really finite personal touch into their work, whether it's a passion project or a commercial project, you know, a paid project. Um, because art's supposed to make you feel something. So if you don't feel something mm-hmm. when you create it, how is anyone supposed to feel something when they witness it? Exactly. Absolutely. That's, that's, it's, it's, it's important. You know what I mean? I think, I think I agree with you. I think it is very important for people to try to, to put a little bit of themselves into their work or at least take on something a little bit more passionately or personally. Um, absolutely. And I, and I think that's, I think it's, 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 it's always different how people do it in different mediums. You know what I mean? So like you've done a lot in photography, but now that you started to switch into, into video as more of your specific focus, like, have you found ways of how to kind of break into that, especially since you're doing a lot of client work um, with artists that you've like collaborated with, but have you kind of built ways off of doing that for videos too? Um, a little bit here and there. Yeah, it's still kind of a, uh, a new medium for me. So kind of finding how to like do passion projects on that end or is still new. Um, but definitely with Adam, Adam, the influence, uh, we he gives me 100 percent creative freedom, um, which I love, man. That is well, working with an artist that you mesh well with and you can work well with that just literally gives you 
100% freedom over how a project is going to come together. Mm-hmm. It's amazing because then I do get to have that moment where I can kind of feed my own energy into it and feed my own personal experiences into it as well. Um, and again, that's kind of where that nobody cares work harder kind of fell in is, you know, I can sit here and I can be raw and vulnerable all day and I can put it out there in the world in the most creative ways possible. But at the end of the day, it's done, it's over with. And what's next? Exactly. Absolutely. Not true. So with um, one, one question I want to ask about the video side is like you had did a video before we had met. And then when we had met, you were like mainly in, in photography. I guess when you started out video, like you you must have took a break a break from it from a little for a little while yeah um interestingly enough my friend adam um he was really the only person i was working with at the time when i first started and it was just kind of like a hobby for me then it wasn't i wasn't trying to sell work really um i was just trying to decide if it was what i wanted to kind of continue to pursue at the time Um, just kind of dabbling in it and trying to experience it for what it was while enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Um, And as soon as we kind of like reached this level where, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, I really like this. You know, I really think this is a move for me. Um, He had some really serious personal things go on and he needed to kind of step away from everything for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, So he actually stopped doing music for about four years. Um, Mm -hmm both kind of stepped away for about four years. Um, Him from music and me from video. I maintained my photography and traveling and all of that other stuff. But I just kind of like hit pause on the video side of things. And then he came back into it and that kind of like reignited that spark for me. And then that was around the time that you kind of stepped into things and we did No Sweat Pimp. And then I've had a couple other clients, you know, that have hit me up and I've built really good rapport with really great relationships with. There's a couple people, Jacob Stover, he goes by purpose. Um, Him and I just met this past year and we work tremendously well together. He's a great person for me to be able to get creative with also. Um, So there was, yeah, there was roughly like a four year kind of like hiatus from video work. And it was a really interesting time for it to happen because like I said, Mm -hmm. I had just been, just gotten into it and then we just hit pause. And then when it kind of like naturally fell back into place, it, nothing, I don't force anything. Like that's my big thing. If it doesn't feel natural and doesn't, doesn't feel right, then it's not going to work. So when it kind of all naturally kind of fell back into place, I mean, it just kind of, it took off, man. I was ready. Everyone around me was ready. All of the people that were involved on every project, anything that we were doing was just coming together so effortlessly. And Mm -hmm. that's kind of what jumped me to Mm -hmm. where we're at now. You know, Ashley was taking some portraits of me and kind of realized, you know, she really had a love for this as well. And she kind of took off on the photography stuff and I kind of took off on the video stuff and we just, I don't, it's been what, two, three years almost now. And it feels like it's maybe been six months, man. Like it flew by and it was just all effortless. Not that there wasn't a lot of work put in because trust me, (laughs) there's tons of work put in, but like from a forcing it kind of stands, it was just all really natural and it just, it flowed so effortlessly. That's great. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. Cause I would say, well, would you say when, cause around the time when I had asked you to do no sweat pimp, uh, the videos for him, I think, I think at that time you were maybe still just in photography. Would you yeah, say that, that was that like was- right around the, the beginning of like the rebirth, if you want getting call back it that, into you know? it. Yeah. Would, would, would that have been a moment that kind of helped inspire and push to, to start doing video again? Seth, hundred percent. Those So yeah, definitely. When we, when you and I collaborated on no sweat pimp, um, that was huge for me, man. That was like a really pivotal point in time for me. 
Um, and the fact that you trusted me, you know, after not having, you know, a huge rapport or a huge portfolio to be able to even present to you at that time. Um, that was really big for me. You know, you went to film school, you are more technical, you have a, a huge understanding of the industry and a different perspective of the industry mm-hmm. than I do. So being able to collaborate with you on that was definitely huge. That was a huge pivotal point for me. Absolutely. And it 100% pushed me more into wanting to continue to pursue and educate in the film side. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. I, 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 cause at that time, I don't know. I think it just made sense for me to, to say, Hey, like Trinity, I want you to shoot this video. There's not really, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of other folks that came to mind that one was just availability wise, but also want people who I don't think, because I had to look at it from a different standpoint as well. I had to look at it from a few different standpoints. I had to look at it from me being a director. I'm like, all right, who's going to be my DP? Who's going to be the person who I can collaborate easily on that? But also I had to look at it from a standpoint that I had never had before of being a rapper, you know, not a rapper still, but uh, (laughs) being a rapper, being this artist, you know, who's performing, I had to look at it from that standpoint. And I had to kind of, I had to kind of almost put myself in the position of the people who I've worked with as, you know, their rappers and stuff like that. So I had to just really choose what was best. And and we created some dope ass shit. Um, Some super, super dope shit. And, And it's funny too. I don't know if you're, Oh, I'm sure you remember this that there was a certain point I remember where I think you may have wanted to like put out an album. Do you remember this? Not an album, not an album. No, no, or no, not no. a song not or something, a song yeah. maybe. I, I, I sat there for a while and uh, I even talked to Adam about it a little bit too. Um, yeah. Like I said, I, I dabble in writing. I would say it's yeah. a little bit more like poetry, um, yeah. but that stays really private. Um, that's let me find out. Like, Trinity got some separation. bars, yo. Trinity well, got some bars. I know you've seen somewhere. some of them on Facebook <laughs> and social media. I know you've seen some bars. Oh, I got of course. some bars. Of uh, course. But no, that's not for me. I don't. That's not the persona I want to embody. That's definitely not the path I want to go down. I definitely am yeah. more comfortable with the camera in my hand. Yeah, that's that's. But I I just remember that. Um. And it was it was it was a time because yeah, No Sweat Pimp was such a that was such a just a completely transcending moment for me especially. But it was just it was interesting oh, sure. to see everybody who gathered around it. And I want to talk about just transcending moments. This is this is, um, you know, as as you have grown as an artist, right? There's definitely certain things that you remember, like in your in your throughout the decade. You said uh, throughout the decade that you've been doing it. There's like moments that kind of speak to like your success and speak to like your growth as just not just as a creative, but as a as a human being, you know. And um, I, I want to say, what what moments are those for you? Do you have like three or four moments that have like kind of been those moments where it's like you felt like you've moved up a level because of those specific moments, like three or, those, four. In that three or four, like in the decade, because hundred, three or four hundred. <laughs> I want to, I want to, I'll, I'll give you some brief examples. You know um, for me, obviously I would say one big transcending moment was really just the very first year I, I uh, called myself a professional, which was when I graduated from college and went back home to Indiana. That was a transcending moment because in 2016, I felt like everybody was was moving strong. Um, everybody was moving strong in 2016. And, and I felt like that was the time where it was great for me to just start. And, you know, I I'd also had to face some adversity, fucking tore my ACL, you know, right after college and uh, had to deal with that. Then I think another transcending moment was probably 2018. That was probably one of the worst years I've, I've had, you know, having to deal with fucking, you know, this girl basically f- fucking me over, at least in my mind, how I thought it was. <laughs> and then, you know, lost, lost uh, my aunt Lorraine and just hella shit. And then no sweat pimp was also kind of brewing around that time. That's when we yeah. started creating those videos. And then I think 2019 was a big transcending moment because no sweat pimp came out. And then not only that, but dial had directed that video. That was a big project for SW films at the time. And then after that, fucking big Sean, that was a huge, that's probably one of the bigger examples just because I was still in Indiana and I had worked on that. And uh, I felt like the entire perspective of, of me and, and everything I was doing had completely changed as far as like how people around me thought about me. 
and yeah. uh, stuff like that. And then I think that's kind of happened now. Moving to Cal, I mean, just moving to California in 2019 as well. And now, you know, 2020, there's some transcending moments too. Being in a my second relationship ever, and then my second short film ever. I mean, a bunch of shit like that. But 2021 has definitely been that moment too. Um, fucking working on all of these different projects, being a part of the the Baby Keem Kendrick Lamar video as a second second AD was fucking ridiculous yeah, uh ridiculous you know like moments like that like has there been transcending moments for yourself that where you can just you can feel a different growth whether it's a positive or a negative experience like what are those moments been for you oh absolutely um so like fresh out of high school obviously like life got real you know i remember there was a time where i was holding down like four jobs at once um Ooh. yeah crazy uh, yeah yeah <laughs> Real crazy. Um, but the camera was always there, you know, building up a client client base. At that time, I was doing a lot of like families and some senior portraits still, just weddings, things like that. And back then, you know, that kind of felt like success. You know, mm-hmm. OK, I've got, I've got a client base. You know, I have a couple of people that are consistent, that are return customers. Um so back then, you know, that was definitely a moment where I was like, okay, cool. You know, I'm, I'm doing it. You know, I'm doing the damn thing. This is success. Um, and then I had a bad habit that I'm trying to, to not let happen anymore of when those mental health breaks come, you know, it kind of was putting my creative life on pause uh, in order to get through it, whether it was a week or a month or six months, you know. Um, so there were a few of those back then in that time frame, too you know, from like 2012 to like 2014, 2015, uh, where it was really kind of up and down, you know, I was doing a little bit, but not a lot. Um, and then from there, you know, I traveled a little bit and that was huge, you know, getting to experience the world through the lens was unreal, you know, uh, definitely a transcending moment. There was um, locally in the United States or abroad, it really doesn't matter. Um, I remember I took a a road trip out West, uh, and saw the grand Canyon for the first time. And I went and went for sunrise and took one of the photos that I, at the time, you know, I was the most proud of. And that was a, a big moment for me. And then, uh, traveling abroad, you know, going, like you said, Chernobyl, I went to Chernobyl twice, twice, uh, just because, you know, like it was just so, captivating for me you know i'm i'm huge on urbex i love urban decay i love when nature takes over what man has done i just love the emotion that it evokes and being able to like capture that and share that was huge for me um yeah and it was it was really surreal to actually like i i crossed a lot off my bucket list man and did it with the camera in my hand and it was it was huge. It was such a transcending moment for me. Um, and I was going through a lot of personal stuff at the time, you know, so it was like kind of therapeutic as well to be able to like just shoot and focus on shooting, you know, these amazing places. Mm -hmm. Um, and then coming home from that, I kind of like had lost my entire clientele from being gone Mm -hmm. for so long. So that was kind of like really hard to, to deal with for a while. Um, but it kind of, I think it was everything I needed because that was the moment when things kind of morphed and changed. You know, I realized that I could continue to shoot families and weddings and whatever, but it wasn't where my passion was. So mm-hmm. like, yeah, I can shoot it. I can do an amazing family session for you. No problem. But I didn't have that like huge clientele base anymore. And I was okay with it, you know, like it made it a rough transition, but it was everything I needed because it, it kind of forced me to reevaluate everything and kind of actually pursue what I love to do in the industry. And then Ashley came along and, you know, she really dove in head first and really has a passion for it as well. And she's still kind of in that phase of like, you know, what is her number one passion in the industry, you know? And I think we've found that. I think we've kind of, oh, sorry, narrowed that down. Um, Mm -hmm. And we're both like at a point right now where we are just 
full speed ahead in what we love to do. And it's right now is probably the most exciting time. Like in yeah. all 12, almost 13 years of me holding a camera in my hand now, I think right now is definitely, you know, like one of the big, big moments that I'm always going to look back on like 20, 30 years down the road. Like right now is, is one of the biggest transcending moments. And it's just, it's kind of surreal to like be able to pull out of it and see it, Mm -hmm. but also experience it firsthand. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's also beautiful. You know, especially the fact that you traveled to so many places. Like I remember, uh, yeah, right when you had came back, I think you were coming back from traveling when, when me and you had met and there was so much, I remember you telling me about Chernobyl and, and everything. Uh, I want to go into that space just a little bit. Like how, when you, when you went to travel, I I guess, what was the place that stood out the most to you? Um, And that kind of like really delved into that therapeutic experience because when you traveled, right. I know you had traveled with your mom for a little bit, but you traveled by yourself for most of this stuff, right? Um, I was with my mom for a lot of it. My mom has traveled since I was really young. Um, So that's kind of always just been our relationship is traveling together, you know, whether it's in the States or abroad, it really doesn't matter. Um, Mm -hmm. That's always how we've spent time together. That's always how life is just, that's like the norm for my life, you know, for my family kind of arrangement. Um, So, I mean, all the way from like a young child, you know, traveling out to California for the first time or, you know, going to Mexico when I was like 12 or 13, you know, going to Boston when the Red Sox won the world series, like, there were all these different moments in time and I owe a lot of who I am to traveling with my mom. Um, she definitely was the person that got me where I am with the camera in my hand and was, she's an entrepreneur herself. You know, she's on like her third business right now. Um, she's currently living in Tbilisi, Georgia and started a co-work co-live right at the beginning of COVID man. And oh, wow. she's killing it. She's killing it. Um, but yeah, uh, that specific trip, um, honestly, man, I don't know that there was like one place that stood out more than the other. It's all, it's all an experience depending on like what it is. You know, I could point out like Vietnam, being in the villages in Vietnam where nobody speaks English and it's not like a tourist area, but the Viet- Vietnamese people are like inviting us into their homes for tea and we can't even like properly communicate. Um, that was surreal or like going to Iceland, you know, that was, that was surreal. Just being in a field of lava, you know, like unreal moments. Um, Chernobyl obviously was unreal. Um, so many other, so many other moments that I could list off, but it's always therapeutic. You know, I take traveling so heavily, uh, for so many reasons, um, the culture, the food, the experiences, meeting people, the opportunities that it creates for you as an individual, it's all therapeutic, man, especially when you're able to do it and create art. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I definitely, I feel like I've traveled. Uh, I've definitely never traveled outside of the country. I need to do that. I have a, yeah. I have a passport application somewhere in my desk back here, but <laughs> <laughs> I need to fill that shit out. But uh, yeah, traveling is so big, especially even just in the States too. I mean, there's so many crazy and beautiful things that a lot of people don't realize, you know, in the States. Um, but, um, well, coming from the Midwest, I think it's really, uh, it's really bizarre how many people like are confined to the Midwest, you know, their uh, whole life, like how yeah. many people have never seen the ocean or never been in the mountains, you know, like people yeah. really do take for granted our nation, our nation's amazing. It's beautiful. It's so diverse. There is so much to it. And I yeah. say this to anyone listening travel even if it's just two states over like get out and go do it because i promise you it's worth it yeah no one thousand percent i mean that that goes into something um because i understand that for sure i think you know i saw something on on facebook the other day that was it was a very interesting topic or a very interesting interesting question is um let me see if i can find it but basically it said the person had said that indiana is not the reason or do you believe that Indiana is the reason that you're like stuck to something yeah, or whatever? I know what you're talking about. I saw that as well. Yeah. And I was like, um, let me see if I can find the Indiana's exact not quote. the reason you're uh, unsuccessful or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I can't find the quote. This person be 
posting too much random ass shit. But anyway, I had seen that. I had seen that, and I and I thought that was interesting. And I'm like, and I agree with it. I agree with it in a way because, you know, when I went back home, you know, Angola, Indiana was is it has no market for the shit that I wanted to do. So I had to create everything on my own. And of course, it led me into Fort Wayne, which naturally that was the case. You know, Fort Wayne is also home for me. I was born there, got family there, had a lot of clients there, whatever. So but Fort Wayne, I also believe is not it's it's it doesn't have the market that it wants to have, you know, so like um, at least a successful market. Let me just say that in in video. Um, But specifically, though, I was just like, uh, yeah, I, I was like, I agree with that because a lot of people get this small town mentality and j cole was the one that said it i remember at a, at a concert he just talked about the small town mentality how people are so afraid to go outside of those bounds that they're living in those boundaries that they're in and they're afraid to go out of it because the side it's the fear of the unknown you know and I, and I don't know why people have that fear so much like a lot of people in indiana probably and i don't know i mean like a few people but then some you know probably not some people probably look may look at me weird just because i decided to move to to california but it's like my thing is this right and it goes into that in that in that question is like yes indiana is home and i love indiana but what the fuck i was trying to do I, I couldn't have necessarily done it in indiana because one there's just there's just there's just not enough financial support or backing one in my hometown but in indiana in general for for that creative space you know and it's it's obviously california this shit is you know there's hollywood there's the bay area which i live in which is of course more prominent in in the tech industries but a very prominent film community here too a lot of people would be surprised about you know because of all the you know silicon valley and tech shit but i mean yeah, I guess for you, right, with you traveling so much, but also, you know, still being in Indiana, like, do you felt like, do you kind of feel like Indiana, like, do you feel like there's some limitations in there that kind of frustrate you sometimes about the Indiana community for for creatives? Without a doubt, man, without a doubt. Um, not that you can't be a successful creative here, because I know many that are very successful, Um but I personally, I definitely feel like there's like a cap on what you can achieve in the Midwest, whether that's Indiana or not. Um, there's definitely a cap on what is available, what you can achieve. And I think part of that comes into, like you said, financial backing. Part of that comes into ease of access, whether that's studios or rental mm-hmm. or gear or you know what, like you said, the tech industry, you know, kind of plays a part in the film industry. It all kind of goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Um, No different than take the fashion industry, you know, there's what four main fashion capitals in the world and none of them are in the Midwest. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, it, it just, in order to actually like exceed that cap, you, you do have to go somewhere else and it's, it's in the works. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, you know, I think uh, what I would say what Fort Wayne is trying to do, for instance, you know, Fort Wayne, Indiana is uh, the second biggest city in Indiana for anyone who doesn't know that. But uh, Fort Wayne is like they're adding. So like one thing I can appreciate about Fort Wayne as a city and as a, a community is that they are trying to build into a better community. Now, yeah. my biggest beefs with Fort Wayne mainly come by the attitude of some of some of the people there, which is mainly creatives who I know. It's mainly the attitudes of certain people um, that I feel like kind of bogs Fort Wayne down for me. But like um, the community itself, they're trying to grow almost into like a, how Grand Rapids, Michigan is like they're really trying to grow into something like that, which I like. Grand Rapids is a really dope ass place and a really artistic community. And I feel like Fort Wayne can can grow into that as well. And, and, and honestly, you know, uh, as, as great as, you know, I love California, but California does not come with no faults. It definitely has its faults. Absolutely. Uh, one is so fucking expensive here. It's, it's ridiculous how expensive it is here. I'm, I'm lucky to be in my own apartment now. That's also an update of mine. I live by myself now, which is fucking great. And uh, it's not, it's not at like super, it's not super expensive. I pay like, it's like 1080 a month here or something like that, which is good. You know, you know, of course, when you add on to all the other bills, it's like, okay. But, you know, luckily I'm making enough, so it's fine. But like how it is with this particular with California, though, is a lot of people are moving out of California because of the prices. And a lot of people yeah. are moving into the Midwest now. The Midwest is starting to become 
that hub for one tech companies and these different businesses, but specifically these tech companies are starting to move into different places in the Midwest. And I feel like eventually, maybe in the next five or 10 years, the Midwest will be more prominent with some of those things. Now, will they be as prominent as a California or a Nevada or Arizona, whatever, for some of those different industries? I don't think so. It's going to take way longer. You know what I mean? Okay. But the the fact that, you know, these companies are already starting to move now because of taxes and, and just, you know, whatever kind of community you some you even have to bring in a lot of those those politics. It's sad to say, but a lot of people just political ploys move people from wanting to, to do business in some spaces. So, um, you know, I feel like the Midwest will grow for sure. But I do think right now, Indiana and in, in per se is not it's not the greatest when it comes to the creative uh backing for stuff you know and uh there's been some real prominent creatives that have came out of indiana you know you got people like at least filmmakers you got jordan Wosey, you got um levi i forget his last name but levi something he's done videos for joey badass um the midwest in general i feel like produces a lot of incredible talent but i definitely think like that small town mindset it affects, you know, how you grow as an artist, whether it's music, you know, film, whatever, you know, the, the niche may be. But uh, yeah. yeah, the Midwest definitely it produces a lot of crazy talent, but yeah. Yeah, I don't think we can support thriving artists. Right. And, now. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, all those people I just named definitely do not live in Indiana anymore. I think Jordan okay. was and Levi. They all live in L.A., you know, and do work in L.A., you know. Um, but like, that's the thing. So for you though, with the idea of that, I feel like the small town mindset comes, it, it, it comes in the form outside of a, you know, a non, a non, um, I guess something, something you can't necessarily touch. There you go. I see the screen now, now you're on the ratio, but, um, basically the idea of like that small town mindset, I think even goes outside of just a mindset. I think it goes into this, like, physical space to physical space too right so it's like sometimes even you may you may have a bigger mindset for you know wanting to do things outside of that space but sometimes you get yourself caught in situations to where it's like it keeps you it keeps you in a space for a little while um and usually those things are always personal sometimes creative too you know like one thing about me is is when i was living in indiana i made sure not to get myself in situations that would keep me keep me in Indiana or at least like keep me tied in the, down, like locked in. Yeah, yeah. Like tied down because, you know, I, I always wanted to work outside of, you know, India. I wanted to just feel free to travel wherever the hell and do some work, you know, like I had to, you know, like I said, this year went to Alabama to do some work. It was tied into a company that's in Indiana, but you know, they had something in Alabama um, and had to do that. And then obviously, you know, since I've been living here in California, still have had to travel to Indiana sometimes to do some work or whatever. But um you are now you have a fiance which congratulations again which is amazing but like personal sides of like now that you have a relationship because relationships can for sure tie people down to to certain spaces or certain things like and it's great that she has the same kind of mindset and idea of where you want to go um but did but would you say that was kind of like getting in a, in a relationship kind of was, is also one of those things that may have kind of at least keep you it kept you in indiana for now um not necessarily honestly um there's a lot that like goes on behind the scenes clearly like in everyone's life <clears throat> but we kind of have a game plan uh we've got a three-year plan in the works i'm not gonna speak too much on it because it's, all it's good. definitely yeah. kind of low-key right now um <clears throat> excuse me but uh we we have a clear path and a clear vision on what we want from our lives and mm-hmm. it's very much in tune with one another and i couldn't have couldn't have asked the universe to send me anyone better you know a she is into the creative life like i am you know she yeah. picked up the camera and she picked it up effortlessly you know she's she's passionate about it she she wants the same things out of life as i do uh so honestly i think rather the opposite of what you're asking me you know it's mm-hmm. it's not a a hold back it's definitely a driving force forward and out of yeah the, no, that's good that's town. great yeah absolutely because it's relationships are tough to tough to 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 do you know and especially when 
when like yourself is already such a, a armor plated individual mindset, you know, like it's tough. Like for me, I feel like this year I've had so many, I don't want to say flings, but like kind of flings and uh, you know, none of, none of them have really stuck <laughs> mainly because I'm just one. I don't, I, I, I lose interest in people very quickly. Um, yeah. I lose interest in people, you know, because my, the only thing I've always cared about, I don't say always, because then I sound like an asshole. But truthfully, <laughs> the only thing that I've cared about for the last eight years of my life has been this career, has been this 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 career path. Like, you know, that's that's really it. You know, I, I of course, you know, I I do it all for reasons that are way beyond me, more than myself. You know, my family, uh, you know, and uh, friends as well. Just wanting to, you know, uh, inspire people from my hometown. You know, like even though like Angola, right? Like you live in Kendallville, I think, or in that area, Auburn, Kendallville areas. Like you know, those small towns. People, people have talk shit about small towns all the time. You know, like small towns don't get any good reps. At least, at least you know, small town. Not since the last four years, when we had a uh, you know the the orange man in, in office, I think a lot of people talk shit about the. Uh, <laughs> they talk shit about small towns because those small towns were always supporting you know, that yeah. guy. So I, I guess, you know, when it comes to small towns, <laughs> it's, yeah, you know, so like <laughs> Angola, right. Angola to me, yes. Angola has had, it doesn't have the best rep. There's a lot of, there's a lot of history about Angola that I always continue to find out that is not always the most flattering or whatever, but I think it's just, it's, I, I'm, I want to create a space and a, and a movement and a, 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 a space for Angola that is that changes a lot of those negative connotations i mean every you know i want to i want to add more creatives and entrepreneurs that uh, can do more work because the thing is is like this right for our small towns in indiana in itself to even get remotely anywhere close to these types of industries you know creatively like a california or atlanta or any of these kind of places georgia whatever is we have like someone has to impl- help implement these things and you know, it's it's very rare that sometimes someone outside of it is going to do it. Like, even though these tech companies are moving to these and maybe that's maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe I think the tech companies, when they move to these different places, they add a whole lot of, you know, a, I guess they boost up economy in some ways. You know what I mean? Like when when uh, Tesla eventually fully gets their shit going in Austin, Texas and Austin, Texas already has a ridiculously huge industry creatively and you know in the tech space too a little bit but tesla's gonna add so much more because it's fucking tesla absolutely that that would be like apple you know which is based in cupertino which is in silicon valley that's you know not too far from where i live at like if they move to indianapolis indianapolis economy is about to explode explode you know what i mean if they move to imagine (laughs) this is extreme but imagine they move to kendallville Imagine if the Apple Park moved to Kendallville, Indiana. I just want anybody who's listening or watching this to go look up Kendallville, Indiana, right? <laughs> if Apple moved there, population, there would be no meth in Kendallville ever again. Uh, no, I'm just playing. But like, <laughs> like <laughs> the thing is, is uh, yeah, I think we have to implement those, you know? So I'm sure for yourself with starting your brand, like, you've added more people into your brand and I, and I want to get into those people like who who besides you and Ashley who else is a part of focus creations um so it's it's still morphine it's still growing um ultimately focus creations is going to embody an entire production company so at the end of the day when it's all said and done you know when i retire at whatever age you know i want to to be able to to have something that doesn't expire with me, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like you said, it's more than just, it's me. It's not, it's, it's not just me. It's not just today. You know, the ultimate goal is to actually be able to build something that is going to be long lasting, you know, that's going to employ people, that's going to inspire people. Um, right now we're slowly adding in, you know, there's just a few new hands on deck. Um, we have a, an on deck uh, hair and makeup artist that primarily works with like the, the risque side of things um, does a lot of work with Ashley. They're very close. I'm uh, <laughs> including um, mm-hmm. her husband as well. Um, his kind of, he's a techie kind of guy. Um, he's kind of still trying to figure out 
what he enjoys doing, you know, where he wants to be at in the business. Um, Mm -hmm. But he's probably going to be a little bit more on the video side of things with me, Uh, whether that's, you know, becoming a color grader or an editor or a steady cam op or whatever that may be. Uh, We have yet Mm -hmm. to define that role for him. But, you know, it's just it's all kind of morphing and growing to embody that whole thing of, you know, I want focus creations to be bigger than Trinity, you know? So that's, that's the ultimate goal is it's going to be something that I hope, you know, is everlasting. You know, I hope that anyone from the Midwest or, you know, wherever, you know, is able to, reach out and feel comfortable reaching out, you know, and wanting to join and wanting to expand and grow and learn. But more than that, I want it to be something that, like you said, you know, can, can kind of put Indiana on the map, not necessarily Kinderville or Angola or a specific Mm -hmm. town, but you know, the Midwest, like I said, we, we produce so many amazingly talented individuals, you know, whether it's music or, commercial work or whatever, you know, whatever the industry may be. Um, the Midwest produces so much talent Mm -hmm. and the idea that you have to leave the Midwest to be successful. Um, although I don't disagree with that concept, um, it, it could become dated, you know, like you said, you know, there is the potential that, you know, Indiana or Ohio or Michigan, whatever could really become a it's it's the potential is there the the artists are here they reside here they are formed and morphed and grown right here you know between a cornfield and a hayfield you know that's that's where we were born and raised and that's part of who we are as creatives um so ultimately man the goal is just it's to be able to like have something everlasting that affects people for generations you know that can help people grow absolutely with with the team that you have growing, um, you know, because I think one thing for myself that is SW Films, of course, is just me. It has been me for the past. It'll be, I want to say, four years now. That four I've, years, yeah. Oh, my God. That's kind of wild to think about. But, like, you know, um, I definitely want to bring on people to the company, you know. But, of course, I guess my thing, reason why I haven't done it is, one, I want to I wanna give something uh, great to, you know, to bring a group of people into i want to i want to have a more uh a a more sound like how do i say a more sound structure for sw films and just the things that have happened so when you find these people i mean obviously it kind of is based off of more of like a personal relationship beforehand i would assume um right now yeah some of them i would say definitely more personal but again, it kind of falls back to that like natural flow. Um, nothing's been forced, you know, it was never like, Hey, I really need somebody to do this. You want to just do that for me? Um, it's kind of just been like really natural evolution, you know, and, and that's how I want it to continue to grow. I want it to just morph on its own and grow on its own. And I want the right people in the right seats. And in order to Mm -hmm. get there, you, I personally, Oh shit. Sorry. I personally really like the fact that, you know, we are still really low budget. We're still really, you know, small on the totem pole, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But the bigger we grow, you know, I like that we're going to do it as a team. You know, I really, truly believe in some of the people that are involved right now. And I really, truly believe that the more hands we have on deck that are passionate about it, the quicker that evolution is going to naturally kind of take place. And for me, like that's key. Yeah. It might start on a personal level, but it it all comes down to right person, right seat. You know, do we have the right person who is, is passionate and, and ready to embody this focus creations as more than just a job? You know, it's, it's not a job. It's, it's a way of life. It's, yeah. It's getting out of that small town mindset that you have to work a nine to five and you have to have a house and two cars, you know, you don't, you don't need that to be successful in life. And I think any entrepreneur or any creative can kind of resonate with that, you know, um, travel has probably really played a part in how I perceive all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited to, 
to bring more people in and you know i'm i'm open to anybody anybody you know whether you currently have kind of like a rapport under your belt or not i mean if you have the passion and the drive you got a seat at the table for me yeah have you uh have you seen there's this video i think it was on tiktok i don't know if you're an avid tiktoker i am not i just i have it downloaded on my phone because Shout out to my friend Kylie. She thinks that I need to get on TikTok, and I'm just like, I don't know why. Uh, well, I'm not saying I don't know why. TikTok is is a very good platform, I guess. But like, there's this video of uh, this kid. He's like 22 years old, and he goes up to Logan Paul, and he tries to. He says that he quit his job. I don't know if you've seen this video, but he quit his job, drove all the way to I would assume L.A. where Logan Paul is. You know, Logan Paul and them is from Ohio, but the kid was from Ohio. Quit his job said he doesn't have any friends, said he's not close to his family and goes up to Logan and say, yo, I want to work with you. And, you know, Logan's kind of like questioning him in a way. And he's like, uh, he's like, man, he's like, well, what are you good at? The kid says, I don't, nothing really. I don't know. (laughs) And uh, literally like Logan kind of just tells him like, nah, man, like, you know, he just kind of denies him, you know, but in a way that was, you know, I don't I don't fuck with the Paul brothers at all, but you know, but Logan yeah. did that in a way though that I kind of respected because he was like, "You're gonna you're gonna come up to me asking for a job, but what the fuck are you good at?" And then when you say nothing, then how do you how do you expect me to like want to offer you a position? Imagine that. Put yourself in that position where someone someone quit their job in Kendallville. You know, they quit their job working at Rural King or something, <laughs> and uh, they went. <laughs> <laughs> they went to you and said, yo, Trinity, I've been seeing everything you've been doing. You've been working with these different magazines, like with these different artists, these different companies. I want to work with you. And they ask you, they, they same thing. You ask him, what the hell are you good at? And he says, nothing really. But would you hire that person? Like, would you, <laughs> would you put yourself? I mean, honestly, person? like if, if they have the passion, you know, like, like I said, I'm 12 going on 13 years deep into this and it's, it's very important for me to continue to, to learn and grow on a day-to-day basis, you know? So that's, you can't teach that. You can't teach, um, drive, passion. you, you know? can't teach passion right. and you, drive. You can't yeah. teach that. So if, if somebody has that at the end of the day, man, like you have a seat at my table. If you have a driving force inside of you that says, this is what I want to do. And I'm willing to take whatever, you know, whatever compromises, whatever, whatever I need to do to be able to, to, to make it there. If you have that kind of mindset, then absolutely. You have a seat at my table. I have so much that I try to juggle by myself that having more people on board could only make things easier, especially if they're the right type of person. And for me at the end of the day, like I want a huge team. I want to be able to build something that is larger than life, you know, that, that isn't just a one man gig, you know? And Mm -hmm. I think Ashley was a really pivotal role in that, you know, actually like open, opening me up to the idea that you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it all by yourself and having the right people around you um, can really kind of make things kind of take off more naturally and a little bit faster Mm-hmm. So yeah, absolutely. If someone quit their job at Rural King and came up to me with no skill, no talent, <laughs> um, I can I can teach you technical things. I can teach you skills. You can you can educate yourself on any of that. You know, YouTube yeah. University is huge. Uh, but yeah. it it comes down to to having the right person, and to be the right person, you just you gotta want it. You gotta eat, sleep, and breathe it. And right now, we've got a couple of those. And I'm, I'm ready for some more, you know, I'm ready to build focus creations into something that the Midwest has never seen. And in order to do that, it's, it's going to take a, a hefty little team and I'm ready, man. It's, it's in motion. It's on its way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. You, can't teach, you can't teach passion, but you can teach, you can teach all the other stuff. That's right. That's true. And I think even just at the sizes of, of our different companies, I, I would probably say the same thing too. You know, now that particular kid, you know, he had said that, you know, he, he had heard Logan Paul said he makes like 3 million a year or some crazy number. And then that kid says, well, I make a hundred thousand dollars a year, but he still wanted to go work with Logan Paul. 
I mean, there's some commendable things there. You know, I, th- I think it's I think how Logan responded was was right, though, you know, especially when you're making such a big risk like that to to lose, you know, to quit whatever job it was that you were doing where you were making a hundred thousand a year. I would assume that was the thing that he was talking about to then, you know, wanting to work with, you know, this this fucking YouTube celebrity. Um, there has to be some proper thought, I guess, put together yeah, for I that. Agree. But I, yeah. I, I would I would say, yeah, too. I would say, yeah, I'd probably invite that person in. It depends on who that person is, because. You know, one thing that I realize about individuals who want to get into this industry is that they look at they look at what's the the shining examples uh, in the uh, first and foremost, right? They look at like the 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 award the rewards that you know people have have gotten from working in these industries. You know, the the cars, the clothes, the hose, yeah. all that kind of shit, right? And uh, the thing is, is like a lot of people only look at that and they don't understand that this is this has to be a life commitment. Exactly. I have made it. I have made it a. You know, I've said it on my album, and I've said it in, in other podcasts that I've been a part of, and I'll say it here on my own fucking podcast. Is like this is some shit I would die for. There's no other option for me. There's not a plan B. To, there's not a plan B. There's no. never been a plan B. Like this has always been plan A. Everything that I do in my life, whether I quote unquote pivot off of my path for a second it's all a part of plan a there is no plan b this podcast is not plan b this is all in this is an sw films property so this is this is all in plan a so you know a lot of people who i've mentored you know they've wanted to uh they wanted to be actors models you know photographers whatever and they don't realize that yo you have to commit yourself like there's a lot of people that you know ha- who i've seen break into video now who are in other fields like rappers or you know just graphic designers whatever and it's like i, I don't get it i don't really get to i don't i don't get it doesn't interest me you know because it's like i look at it like this and it may be harsh for some people but it's like if you couldn't go all in on that one field what the fuck makes you think that you can go all in on this field this is not an easy field to be in especially when you're at the the, at the level of the industry that i'm in this shit is not easy this shit is fucking hard it's hard you know i've been lucky to build a great network and everything but this shit is not easy to to get up in these certain spots and you know it's it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of investment it takes a lot of you know, unrealistic scenarios and realistic scenarios to 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 really get where you want to be. And I think that breaks me off into into the idea now of just the community that um, the communities of these different type of industries that we're in. Right. So photography for you, like I said, photography is such an oversaturated, saturated industry. Right. And I'm sure yeah. when a lot of people I'm sure like one thing that you had said that I've always loved the, I've always loved that particular, that particular term of community over competition. Um, I want you to explain that to me and explain that to the audience. Like what, what does that mean for you community over competition? So personally for me, like I don't harm myself by helping anyone else. You know Um, I've said it before. I'll say it again. The only competition I'm in is myself. You know, I want to continue to grow and educate and, and expand my own horizons and, if you succeed in what you're doing, that doesn't hurt me. If you have Mm -hmm. three times the clientele base that I have, that does not hurt me because who's to say that your clients are the right clients for me anyways, you know, um, it comes down to a lot of different kind of bits and pieces, but at the end of the day, you know, helping someone who is also in the same industry or the same field as I am in, is never going to hinder what I am capable of doing. Um, in fact, I, tr- I truly believe that helping other people grow is only going to help me grow. I mean, you've done mentorships. You've, you've kind of had firsthand experience on how that works. You get to kind of break it down again and kind of like almost relearn some things, you know, when you're, when you're mentoring or helping somebody else grow. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, as a, as a creative industry and as a creative community, it, it does take some collaboration. You know, if you'd have never reached out to me, who's to say that I would be where I'm at today? You know, you, you don't know what could happen. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not opposed to working with anybody, no matter what the field is, no matter what the industry is. I don't think I'm better than anybody. I don't see anybody in the entire universe as my direct competition. I don't ever want to have that mindset that you know, I need to be better than you. I need to outdo you. I need to outwork you because that that is that fluctuates so much and that changes so much and i think especially in the creative industry there's a lot of like 
especially with the oversaturation right now, there's a lot of like surface level people there. There's people that whether they're just new to it or they're just inexperienced in it, there's their surface level. And then there's people like you and I, you know, who eat, breathe and sleep it. And for people like that, who truly are creatives at heart, you're not in competition with anyone, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you can't, if you can't help fellow creatives succeed in their own right path, then you don't need to be a creative at all. Yeah. I, I would say I agree with all of that. I would say, especially too, for these small communities that, you know, that me and you have been a part of, you know, Kendallville, Angola, Fort Wayne as well. Fort Wayne is, Fort yeah. Wayne seems, you know, Fort Wayne is uh second biggest city, but it's not like, it's, it's still, I think Fort Wayne, it's a small community. It's still a very small community. Very, very small. Like the Bay area, in general, like, you know, you can put San Francisco in one or Oakland, but really I think the whole entire Bay area, a lot of people just put it in one. I think in the creative community, I would put it in one, but even that is a very small community. <laughs> it is a very small. Exactly. And then the Bay area in the, if you had to comp- put all the, all that into one, I mean, that's probably over two, three, maybe 4 million people, you know, and that's still hella small. Um, yeah, but like, absolutely. I would agree, but I, I would also say this, right. I would also say that the the community aspect the collaboration aspect i think one is very important in those small places because at the same time if you don't collaborate with these people and you just kind of stick to yourself um or stick to wanting to be malicious towards other people and everything it 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 doesn't really help the community grow in in it's in it's uh in just the in just the unity when it comes to like helping create an actual creative space and a creative community for that place, it doesn't help when, when there's nothing but competition, but at the very same time, I think competition is super, super healthy. I agree. I could not agree more. It's super, super healthy because we need that because especially when, when like these creative, these small communities usually get oversaturated the quickest, right? Um, most times I would say, but like, for example, Fort Wayne, there are so many fucking photographers in Fort Wayne. I could throw a nickel in that motherfucker and it's going to land on somebody's on somebody's camera, (laughs) you know? And, you know, like, that's why I always appreciated your work because I, I like photography is one of those things that it is the, it is people think it's easy to do. So everybody wants to try to be a photographer and that has always annoyed me, you know, that everybody just think it's easy to do and just pick up a camera and, and everything. And they don't realize the technical shit or how to actually really go like to make an image speak to you instead of just posting, right. a, you know, taking a picture of something and, you know, ugly ass uh, fucking highlights and just nasty looking ass things. Right. But like I appreciated your work because one, it felt like there was there felt like there was emotion in the work. You could just tell, you know what I mean? Um, and just how you branded yourself too. I mean, there's so, there's honestly so many things that I would say for anyone who's listening, who wants to be a photographer or videographer, whatever, you really have to learn how to, once again, put those personal, your, your, that, those personal things into, into your work, but you really have to learn how to brand yourself. Cause like, as much as you have to be a creative, you have to be a businessman too. businessman, yes. businesswoman. You have to do that because service level it only gets you so far. And the niche too, right? The niches are very, are very big too, because and I think in photography, I feel like the niches in photography kind of like stick out the most, right? There's a lot of people who are strictly wedding, wedding photographers, you know, wedding yeah. businesses, wedding, all that kind of shit is, you know, it, it is pretty big business. We'll call it. Cause you know, weddings happen all the time and love is great and all this kind of shit. And people can make, you know, pretty good money off of wedding videos. Like I had a, I had a teacher in film school who I remember who had a wedding business wedding video business and that motherfucker would make a lot of money just off of one wedding like 10 grand you know maybe just him and one other person you know so wedding there's there's niches like that but then there's like the real basic ass ones like family photos or like baby baby photographers or the 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 what do they call them this the high school portraits you know the senior photos all that kind of stuff like a lot of that stuff can be to me at least are are the very basic ass kind of niches, but then you have people who only do street photography, who only do landscape photography, who only do nature photography, who only do strictly portraits of maybe like uh, people and just human environments. I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy and I forget his fucking name now, but he has this YouTube channel called um, soft white underbelly. Have you ever heard of that? No, I don't think so. 
after this after this interview after like look him up so he's a photographer but he interviews these different types of people on skid row in la and um he interviews like prostitutes homeless people drug addicts people who and, and honestly and i've said this before on another podcast episode um how software underbelly was one of those things that kind of helped me want to do this interview because i love the human experience i love delving into what makes people excellent and sometimes what people yeah. what makes people excellent is some of the things that have made people fucking crazy or you know the negative yeah. things in their life that's just the truth as a, as a human experience so like he he always takes every single video that you see from him every thumbnail is black and white and it's a portrait of that person that he's interviewing and like he keeps it that very consistent it's beautiful you know, especially when you go into the interviews and you get to see these people's lives and it's just like, it's incredible. So look, look his stuff up, but um, there's a lot of, there's so many different niches, right? And for yourself, like you were doing a lot of different niches. And I think a lot of people in Fort Wayne or not Fort Wayne, a lot of photographers usually want to kind of start out trying to maybe do some of the more general stuff just to get started and just to kind of keep it going. Um, but I remember me and you had a conversation when I was still living there about, you know, dropping those specific niches that you're doing and doing something, something that you wanted to do, something that was more that kind of focused more on what the the creative aspect that you wanted to delve into. Um, what kind of like when you delved into those niches in the beginning of your career, um, I guess, what made you want to kind of separate yourself from some of those basic niches in photography? So I see your standpoint on calling them basic, but I'm going to I'm going to kind of argue with you there for just a hot defend second. it go um, ahead let's go yeah, no no absolutely <laughs> um a niche is a niche regardless um i know some people that are just absolutely amazing newborn photographers or wedding photographers whatever you may whatever you may say um mm-hmm. for me it wasn't like a feeling of it just being like simple and basic you know um i definitely understand where you're coming from i definitely mm-hmm. don't 100 percent disagree um for me it was just you know okay, this makes money. That's cool. Um, okay. I've got repeat clients. That's cool. Uh, I'm bored, you know, that's where, that's where it came down for me. Um, with newborns, for example, uh, that's gonna, that's, that's not gonna go away, you know? So if you're a newborn photographer, you have job security, so to speak, you know, their babies are going to continue to be born. You're going to continue to have that, those photo shoots, same with weddings, same with seniors, you know, all of those little niches, you know, there, there's a, a sense of security in it and a sense of stability yeah. in it. Mm-hmm. But also for me specifically, there's, there's a limit on what you can do creatively. Not that you can't take creative portraits, not that you can't take, you know, really beautiful, astounding fucking photographs of babies or weddings or whatever you may have. But for me personally, I'm a very edgy person. I'm really into, um, I'm covered in tattoos. Obviously I'm homosexual. I'm very, very out there. I'm very, very edgy. Um, and for me personally, like I really thrive in that grungy type of environment and Mm -hmm. none of those types of categories, um, fall in line with who I am as an individual. Um, so for me, it wasn't that I couldn't be successful or that there wasn't, you know, the possibility for growth in those types of fields. Um, for me personally, it was just really like, it, it's too pretty. It's too soft. It's not enough of that personal injection into the art. You know, like I can take a family of six and go take a beautiful portrait of them that they're going to hang on their wall and they're going to look at for 20 years and they are going to love it every time they see it. That's not a problem. I can do that all day long, but for me to actually enjoy what I do to the highest extent, it has to have the possibility to have that, you know, that rougher edge and that little bit of, of a grungier feel and it has to be able to embody who I am to a certain degree. And for me, you know, that's just, that's why I pulled away from those types of, of clients is they want that softer, prettier look. And I respect that, you know, that's just not who I am as an artist. Right. No, absolutely. I mean, you know, and I I get it. I I think, I think 
for sure how I feel about it is, is like, I guess the most of the people that I see do that, I guess sometimes none of that stuff catches me by the eye most enough. You know, I think that's just, it goes on personal preference and everything is subject, everything, you know, art is subjective. So like, you know, so it's, it's based off that personal preference of everything. Um, I just feel like when I see people go into photography, it's, it's a lot of the time is to be safe in the beginning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's to be safe. And I feel like for myself, I kind of came into this industry, not necessarily being safe. I kind of came into it de- doing a risk exactly. people who, yeah, you know, exactly. People, exactly. I have people who don't like, I would say every single short film that I've done, has been a risk in ways of maybe the 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 story or the point of view or the perspective or whatever um a lot of that has kind of became into that realm so my thing is specifically like when i did my very first short film that was a very mature subject and the story had a lot of things going on that was my very first thing that i did even before i would call myself a professional that was risk then sweet mirage was a risk i i put myself in the in the role of of the story and and put my my actual relationship at the time into it that was a risk my new short film um i did that entire film by myself like the only other person that was a part of it was my composer who was in the uk i did it myself that was a risk in just everything i was doing so i don't know i would i would i would say to people who want to get into these type of fields is just take risks and you know how i kind of go back into c- competition and everything um competition is healthy because there's the thing is is the person who stands out the most is usually the one who might get the most attention um and that's it when it comes to people you know there's all these different niches and that's the thing when you pick a certain niche you know there's so many different people to to choose from i guess you know but like um i guess the big thing about the niches is uh or excuse me about the competition of those with the different niches is is sometimes like if you know a baby photographer, for instance, if there's, you know, one baby photographer who just does the basic, you know, kind of Walmart style photos. Okay. That person's probably not going to get the, the greatest, but imagine you had a baby photographer who puts the baby, the child in these really crazy scenarios of, you know, and visually like, you know, instead you have a baby who's riding a horse through some fucking flames or something, wild, you know, something that'd be funny, but something that's unique. Like there, there has to be some uniqueness there. And I think, I think I said for you, that's what stuck out to me is the uniqueness there. I feel like so many photographers just, they, they kind of blend together. And I think the oversaturation of the market, that, that is a bad thing in a way, just because with the Absolutely. blending of it, with the blending of it, there's also a lot of miscommunication and misrepresentation um of other photographers too you know i've, I've yeah. heard i've heard people put themselves in situations where it's like you know um that one person who just kind of has you know maybe subjectively not the greatest type of work gets the most clients just because i don't know and maybe just because of the 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 cheapness and price or maybe just because they um they, they kind of leave themselves a little bit more open for for different things but that unique person may not get it all the time because they they are taking risks a lot of people might not deem to be successful or might not deem to be worth it in the end. But at the same time, I would say being unique is super important um, with that, with all the competitive sides of it. I mean, and for yourself, right? Like yeah. you have, you have so much strength and so much confidence in your, in what you're doing, what you're building, you know, it's, it's great to have that because if you weren't out there being confident and saying certain things, people would want to lump you in with all the the soft photographers and the people who are not doing you know, uh, aren't doing dope shit, you know? And it's like, you don't want to put yourself into that. Um, a lot of people aren't confident. I mean, that's just how I look at it. That's just, this, just how it has came to me because I, I don't want to be lumped in with people who are not, who aren't confident in themselves and who aren't, um, aren't doing the, aren't doing dope shit. I'm just going to keep it real. You know what I mean? I, feel I don't like want to be of, mediocre. Don't want to be mediocre. I'm trying to be, you know, nobody cares work hard. I'm trying to, I want to get in that mindset. I feel like those, those folks, are the you know somebody cares i'll work less you know <laughs> type people <laughs> you know right. it's, no i definitely it's, understand it's not worth it you know and um social media presence right going into the things that um have made you and your brand stick out so much like do you understand the importance of i guess um just like using social media and finding unique ways to use social media to your advantage like um business wise and creatively have you found that like, have you found, do you feel like you've kind of had like a nice pulse on that recently in your 
12, 13 years? Um, yes and no. I feel like it's uh, obviously it's an ever growing, like ever changing type of avenue. Um, it's, it's challenging, man. It's, it's hard. It's, it's a lot of work and that's where like that surface level versus eat, sleep and breathe. It kind of comes into play. Um, that's also where like the teamwork comes into play at the end of the day. If I invest 80% of my energy into the project that I'm working on, the other 20% of my energy needs to be invested in, you know, my relationships, my family, you know, my personal life. So I definitely would say that that's kind of like a, a teeter totter situation for me right there. You know, social media, I love it and I hate it all in one. Um, and it's a huge tool, obviously any creative will tell you that. Uh, but man, it's, it's a lot of work. It's exhausting. And I would love to hire in a full on like (laughs) social media fucking person just to be able to just take that off my plate. Um, and like I said, at the end of the day, you know, that's the goal is to actually build a team so that everyone has, you know, they have their identity and they have their, their time to be able to focus on their aspect of focus creations. Um, Teamwork makes a dream work, man. And at the end of the day, you know, 80% of it comes down to the business and 20% of it comes down to personal life. And that balance isn't always there. You know, sometimes it's flip flopped and especially, you know, creatives like myself that deal with some some mental health issues, you know, I'm, it's huge right now, mental health awareness. And I am a huge advocate for it. We have a line on the clothing company that says, um, art is good for my mental health. I believe that wholeheartedly. I stand by that to my grave. Um, but the social media side of it, man, it's a huge tool. Absolutely. But it's a lot of work and it's it's a delicate little dance. It's so much like, it's 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 tough because I guess how I, it's, it's very tough. Social media is one of those things where, you know, social media kind of unfortunately causes a lot of these mental health issues. Um, it's yeah, a big it part of it. it. It's a bit it's a big part of it nowadays. You know what I mean? Um, especially during the pandemic, which I want to talk about that, too, just briefly, you know, but like how how was your time during the pandemic? How did you how are you how are you like sustaining yourself during that time as a creative and just and personally? there was nothing for like a solid eight or nine months. Um, Mm. I obviously, I don't, I don't remember if you were, you were already in the Bay area, correct? Yeah. I I was, I was in the thick of all the shit over here. Yeah. So Indiana was really, really kind of interesting to be in the Midwest during that. Um, You know, there was the stay at home order going on and you weren't supposed to be even outside around people. And for someone who works in close proximity with one individual to two individuals at a time, you know, like that, that was a huge hit. The whole Mm -hmm. industry kind of got put on pause. Um, So that was interesting, but we kind of used that time. Um, That was kind of a a good moment for us. You know, it it gave us time to kind of pull out of, you know, being in the thick of it and being able to actually, think about, you know, what is the three-year plan? You know, what is the five-year plan? You know, what is the end goal? How do we get there? How do we break it down? How do we make attainable smaller goals to get there, you know? And yeah. it gave me time, you know, to, to work on some education. It gave me time to, you know, network, you know, it gave me time to focus on aspects that I otherwise don't necessarily always have the time to focus on um, yeah. right now specifically, you know, I mean, there's like another spike in the pandemic, you know, that's going on. And right now, it seems to stop. It never seems to stop. I don't don't know if normal is ever going to be a thing again, but you know, that's a whole conversation. (laughs) But uh, no, right now things are, things are really, really busy for us. You know, we're booked unreal amounts right now, which is amazing, especially coming back from that pandemic where, I had just gotten home, you know, was just building up that client base again with the new stuff that I was doing. And then the pandemic hit and everything got put on pause. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, it was a blessing in disguise because it really did kind of give 
Ashley and I both the opportunity to kind of pull out and kind of kind of recenter and refocus, you know, what what the direction we wanted to move forward with was. Yeah, no, definitely. I would definitely say, yeah, the the pandemic for some people definitely was a, a huge blessing not a huge blessing <laughs> let me not say huge blessing but it was a was a blessing you know a lot of people definitely had you know felt a lot of despair and and everything during that time but yeah the the pandemic you know, I wanted to ask that because I definitely didn't know how how your time was I remember you know back when the channel was Stefan's blogs and all that um I remember I'd, I had a video where I just held, called up random people not random people but called up different people and just asked them how, about how they were doing during that time and and I think all the creatives I know and all my creative friends, I was like, I wonder, I wonder how they're handling it, you know, because definitely outside of just the pandemic, it was also uh, the, the, the craziness and, and the wildness, time, wild time for, of the protests as well. The political, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, political stuff and the protests, you know, that was just a huge thing that I had to deal with a lot as well. And I couldn't imagine being in Indiana during that time. That, that, that would have been a little bit more, a little bit more crazy. In, in California, it was, you know, as big as hell. And there's a lot more, there's a lot more presence in those protests, but then, but it, but it was also more in a, it was leaning on the, we'll call it the left as most, most people like, most people like to say during being out in Indiana, where it's a little bit more, a little bit more open racism would have been very interesting. Um, but no, um, well, especially you know, the home of the KKK over here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, the, the, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a, an interesting time to be alive. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. It, um, it still is. It, it, still... it also gave like that opportunity to kind of put that, that personal passion project out there again too, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, I recall one of the photos we did um, with a gas mask and some like green smoke. Um, mm. We actually shot those. I don't know if you saw those, <clears throat> but we shot those the same place that we did your photos, uh, the oh, original okay. session. Yeah. Um, but that was just kind of like a, I was like embodied the pandemic, you know, the crisis that was happening in the world, but also like that just whole, like, let me breathe, like all of it in one, you know, kind of we're suffocating as a society in so many aspects and in so many ways. And there's so much going on, like mm -hmm. breathe and get through it. Um, right. So it was cool yeah. to be able to like throw a passion project in there on that too. Yeah. The pandemic, yeah, I mean, man, it was, interesting time the, yeah and it, and it still is because we're unfortunately still in a pandemic it may not feel like it for a lot of people <laughs> because you know the world is you know everybody's kind of out doing their thing and hopefully you know hopefully nothing you know keeps us keeps us locked in again um but yeah no it's it's um i think it's social media is such a back to social media i think it's such a huge it is such a huge tool and i and i feel like for myself i feel like i feel like weird if i separate myself from it because you know there's also these things and maybe this is just the trick of social media or how social media ends up tricking people like us is sometimes when you're away from social media you think that some people might forget you you know or forget about the things that you right. do or the work that you create and for myself you know i'm like damn i don't want to just not be active on here for a little while and 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 uh you know and people end up forgetting who the fuck I am. But then again, I guess sometimes I have to remind myself of just the impact that's already been placed there and, you know, realize yeah. the, the staying power that you have. But do you find yourself taking breaks from social media every, every now and then? Like, do you, do you plan for that? Uh, I don't plan for it necessarily, but I definitely have like, we'll call it detoxes um, where, you know, social media has a way of like kind of captivating people and it is nice to kind of take a quick little refresh. You know, I think that's important for anybody though. Um, and that kind of mm -hmm. comes into the travel aspect too, you know, mm -hmm. pull away from your day to day every once in a while and hit that reset, you know, hit that refresh. Um, it's important. I think it's healthy, but yeah, absolutely. I definitely kind of go through moments where I'm like, Whew time to take a break, you know, too much craziness going on, or I'm investing too much time and energy into it. Um, you got to find that, that delicate dance, that balance, you know, of personal and work. And as creatives, I think we have a tendency as entrepreneurs in general, um, we have a tendency to put over a hundred percent into what we're doing. And that's not a bad thing, but you do definitely need to be able to hit that refresh, you know, and take some yeah. time and be you. 
Yeah, especially because, you know, as artists, too, I mean, there's so much to delve really in that social media thing. But like, you know, sometimes it can be devastating for some for some folks when they don't get the exact reaction they may want. You know, I me myself, I've been victim of that plenty of times, you know, sometimes where it's like you want to have a certain uh, reaction to the certain things. And, um, you know, sometimes when you don't get it, you're like, ah, fuck. I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get as much likes or comments. So this, per, this specific right, right, person right. didn't comment on this or like this, you know, so, so it can be tough to, to navigate through social media. And I think taking breaks is important. Me. I mean, when I, when I moved to California, I took, I took time off social media, but then I, I really didn't though. I just didn't, I just didn't, I didn't post anything for like uh six months or however long, three, four months or however long it was. Um, but I was still on social media, especially once I met my, when I met my ex, I was just on social media and all that kind of shit. And I thought I wanted to take myself off, but I was like, nah, I'm gonna keep myself on for a little bit longer. <laughs> but like with, with your business and how you've decided to go about focus, like one thing that I see you do a lot for your company, social media wise, is I see that you're definitely make sure to communicate with like your fans and the supporters and the stuff like that. Um, have you like, when it can't, when it comes to like, co- like communicating with supporters and even clients as well, like, have you, um, have you kind of set out, I guess, like a formula for that sometimes? Like, I know a lot of the stuff that you communicate with your fans or, or clients, um, just about, you know, different deals that you have going on. I, I seen one recently that you posted, um, you know, about, uh, like the certain price at these different photo shoots or videos, I believe it was, I seen, um, like, do you do that a lot? Is that like one of your formulas as far as like kind of keeping up with people is maybe, updating them on certain, like, I guess, certain deals or certain things going on within the company that can relate, that can give back to people. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'd, I'd say it's safe to say that nothing that we post is, is just kind of like on a whim. It's all kind of thoroughly thought out and there's definitely a reason for everything that we do. Um, but yeah, I would say social media in that aspect, huge. It's, it's very important to, to make people feel like they're not just a client, you know, like you're, you're more than a client, you know, you are sustaining my life. You are allowing me to continue to be a creative human being. It is so much deeper than a paycheck for me. And at the end of the day, I I want everyone to, to feel that it is deeper than a paycheck. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, Do you believe, do you think, do you have, you, do you believe that you have fans isn't it weird to think about the idea of a fan? Bro, uh, it's super surreal. Um, and I don't know, I don't know where it came into play. I don't know how it started, but yeah, there there's definitely some fans out there. So shout out to you guys. Um yeah. I don't know if it's just like an inspiration thing, if it's people that just support what I've done with my life. Um I don't know the breakdown of it to be completely honest with you, but there's definitely been multiple occasions, you know, where you get stopped at the store or stopped pumping gas. Like, Hey, are you Trinity or Hey, are you T focus? You know? Um, And it's always like that hesitant, you know, like, Ooh, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Um, But it's always paranoia. Paranoia, (laughs) But yeah, um, that's, that's part of the goal though. You know, I want people to see that, you can do anything you want in life. You know, you just, you have to eat, sleep and breathe it, you know, and it comes back down to that. Nobody cares, work harder. People do care. People do pay attention, but the nobody cares, work harder mantra, you know, really embodies the whole idea of, you can give that to your fans. Like that's a message to the fans as well. And I imagine you have, you have fans with a pH, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. that's cool. It it is weird to think about fans because like I don't know, like I hesitate to say publicly that I have fans. Like I feel like I do. And I and I feel like I know I do because certain people that can t- like there's almost what I would call a fan, right? Or maybe a supporter. I don't know. There there there's there, I think there's a difference between them between a supporter and a fan. But like I believe uh you know, people who are always constantly checking out your stuff, always making sure to like and comment. Like my mom, I love my mom. Mom is for sure a fan for me. Yeah, <laughs> you know what true. I mean? <laughs> um, and then there's like other people, like you remember, um, uh, I would say one person who is like a fan too, but also a, a you know, a good friend of mine or a friend of mine, I'd say, uh, Justin McGrew, you remember him? He interviewed me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
but like, there, there, there's certain people who always comment and like and, and all that kind of stuff and we appreciate those people but it is so weird to think about someone being such a fan of you to where they want to kind of like know you personally or know about your life personally you know like almost like how like imagine how kendrick or drake or any of these like celebrities feel about people who kind of go into so much detail uh, like these these stands these people who you know yeah. die for these people you know or in in certain cases they would they love them so much they would kill these people <laughs> which is crazy <laughs> to think about that is like that that's weird to me to think about fans like and just the certain interactions like i imagine for yourself you've had interactions with people who are supporters or fans that maybe just they, they maybe a little off-putting how they approach you whether it's overly positive in the end or negative it's just sometimes the approach is weird like i've had that like i remember a, a cool positive experience but also surprised me i remember when no sweat pimp dropped i remember going into like a myers one time which for people who don't know myers is like the midwest walmart okay yeah. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> so I went into Myers and this kid was like, yo, you did that, you know, Sweat Pimp, you did that song, da, 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 and I, it was just really yeah. random. And uh, I had some friends with me at the time when we were just walking through the store and I'm like, yeah, this is kind of weird and strange. But then again, even, even recently, very recently, and I, and I said this on the podcast before, um, but uh, how somebody reached out to me, after, I think it was after I re- announced the Shang-Chi when I worked on that. And then somebody had just like hopped into SW Films DMs and was like, she's like, if I wrote a song for you guys, would you guys do something with it? Would you guys put it in one of your projects? Like, I'm, she's like, I'm so tired of putting out my music and people just taking it and, and not giving, not paying me or any shit like that. It was very strange and random. And like, you know, as a business owner, you know, I responded responsibly, but I was a little taken back by it because, you know, I had to think realistically. One, I don't know who you are. <laughs> you know, and I don't I don't know anything of your background and I don't necessarily will have time to look into what that background of that person may be. But it just felt like someone trying to plead almost or, you know, something like it just felt weird. It just felt a little weird to yeah, me. Yeah. And because of the stuff that I've done recently, I've been getting some of these interactions. And sometimes I don't know how to feel about them, you know, because, you know, when we when we get to these certain levels that we're at now, where we start as just regular, you know, regular people, people who don't look at don't think we think highly of ourselves absolutely but we don't we don't know what what type of infatuation that people could have over us uh, uh, for us you know absolutely and it's a little strange it's a little strange uh to deal with that you know but uh like you said you know making sure you communicate with your fans in healthy ways is important and i think you know I, i'm trying to figure out ways to do that too just of the thought of having fans and how to communicate with people more in that realm um, so one of my, uh, last questions for you is, um, my last two questions, I would say, uh, just based on what, what you have been doing and just, well, actually, 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 hold on. I got actually one other question that I remember screenshotting. I want to ask you about this back on social media. I want to read it because I, I love I love it and I and I want you to break it down more. This is a recent post from yesterday. You said you are now rocking with the most consistent. I dare anybody to attempt to say my team doesn't put in the most work. We've grown so much and we still have a lot of growth ahead of us, but you can't deny the facts. I want you to speak to the excellence of this post because that's what the excellent podcast is all about. Talk your shit. All right. All right, that. Steph, let's do it. Um I took that four year hiatus, you know, I took that nine month trip overseas. Um, All of those little like breaks, so to speak, obviously affect um, what I'm able to, to, to produce and affect, you know, my client relations, Um, whether that's good, bad or indifferent, that doesn't matter. Uh, At the end of the day though, there's been numerous times, you know, where it's, you know, one of those days where I'm like, I'm done. I'm not shooting anything else. I don't want to edit this. You know, that shoot was garbage. I don't, I don't even want to pull it up. Mm -hmm. We all have those days. Um, but there's a, you know, there's that, that level of buzz that you hear around you, especially in the Midwest here, you know, where you have those people coming out of the woodwork or you have those like faux supporters, you know, that are this kind of artificially like pretending to support. Um, mm. lots and at of the those. end of the day, oh yeah, lots of those. Um, yeah. at the end of the day, 
um, personally for me, you know, I've been able to push through every obstacle, every, every one of those moments where I was like, fuck this camera. It's not doing it anymore. Cause those days are there, man. They exist. You know, Mm -hmm. you get defeated. Like you said, maybe you don't get the feedback you wanted on a certain project or whatever the situation may be. Um, so you're not rocking with the most consistent. Uh, I don't know anybody locally, at least, uh, that is Mm -hmm. putting out as much, uh, continued work, I'll say, as I am uh, right now. I don't know anybody locally, so to speak, that is uh, pushing to, to break those, those ceilings right now. I mean, not that there aren't successful people, because there are successful people here. Uh, mm-hmm. They all have their own right. Absolutely. You know, people are doing their thing. I support them. I respect them. At the end of the day, um, I, I feel that the move that we are making right now with focus um, is the most consistent. You know, I don't think anybody can deny the facts that we continue to grow. Uh, We continue to educate ourselves. We're expanding. We're moving in horizons that I think other people haven't even fathomed the thought of Um, Mm -hmm. me moving into video work. Isn't, you know, I don't want to just do music videos until the day I die cool it's fun i enjoy it but there's so much more to it that has yet to even unfold um deals with brands and deals with magazines and some of the things that are in in the works right now i think um they you they're behind the scenes but uh when I say you're now rocking with the most consistent, man, it's because the team that I'm building right now, we eat, sleep and breathe it. And if you don't eat, sleep and breathe it, you're not consistent. You're not you're not going to continue to produce things. You're not going to continue to grow. It all comes down. You know, it, it kind of falls in line with that. Nobody cares. Work harder mantra. Um, mm-hmm. It actually uh, it actually kind of sparked uh, <laughs> my boy purpose uh, just yeah. moved out to North Carolina a few months ago. And yeah, he uh, just flew back here a few weeks ago to to do some projects with me. And that week uh, he was here for like four days. We shot two projects. Um, But that seven day time period between the few days that he was on set, a few days that Adam was on set, um, a few magazine shoots we were doing, a few uh, boudoir shoots we were doing, you know, just this whole week of just nonstop work. Right. So it was all shooting work though, all filming, you know, it was all in camera in hand. Um, you're now rocking with the most consistent that there's surface level, there's the camera in the hand, but then there is so much more that goes on behind the scenes that nobody mm-hmm. thinks about. Nobody sees, especially the viewers, you know, I'm sure you've had this where somebody's like, Hey, you know, when's that project going to drop, you know, because they don't know, what goes mm-hmm. into the backside of it. So you're yeah. not rocking with the most consistent where I'm sitting right now is where I spend all day, every day. I'm sitting right here in my office, sitting in this chair, right in front of the laptop. And this is, this is home. You know, the, yeah. the work environment is, is where it's at. And not that there shouldn't still be that balance, you know, work and personal, but uh, my team is hungry right now. Everybody involved, everybody that's been involved in the last month or so you know we have so much cool shit that we're about to put out and so much more like further down the road and you know you're not rocking with the most consistent so you better pay attention because the shit that we're about to drop is gonna it's gonna really blow some people away i love it that that is that you are the first guest i've had so far that have have really spoken to their excellence at that level and that's that's where it needs to be that's where it needs to be, um, because that's the whole idea. You know, like, yeah, you got to have a level of humbleness. But yeah, and that, that that is that is absolutely true. You know what I mean? I think it's it's important. The reason I created this podcast and I want people to come on here to speak to their excellence is because a lot of people who I've who I mentored, a lot of people who I know personally, family or friends, sometimes they, they don't have as much confidence. And as a kid, as a young kid who didn't have as much confidence growing up like that about anything, about wanting to get girlfriends or fucking do my own right. shit. Now I've gained it. I've gained it because I've had yeah. to go through so many losses, but I had, but my wins that I got, it showed me that I I'm built for this shit and I can, and I can 
be able to, I, I have control of my own destiny and it's like, exactly. I'm able to create amazing things and move people with those things that I create and with the people that I bring along. And I think that's so important to, to speak to it. Like being humble, of course, is all part of it. Humble is, is a very important, but I would also say a lot of people have to realize, and I think, and I think, you know, this too, that ego is not a bad thing. Ego is not no. a bad thing at all. As now, long as course, you keep it in check. As long as you keep it in check and as long as you use your ego, as long as your ego isn't used to like bring somebody down, ego is a, is a good because people want people to be insecure all the fucking time. Yes. When somebody when somebody doesn't like me talking about the shit that I've done, it's like, yo, you want me to be insecure so fucking bad. I'm not going to be insecure for nobody. I'm already insecure yeah. to my, myself enough, <laughs> but I'm not going to have someone else try to try to do that for me. Fuck no. And it's just like the way that life is set up for me right now, this is just how the shit is. And it's going to continue to get better. So whatever. But my thing is, it's so important to do that. And to definitely, yeah, keep ego in check is super important. But it like one thing that I've definitely have, have loved seeing from you is speaking about your confidence and, and just, you know, letting people know, letting who, because there's doubters out there. Like you said, there's doubters out there who live among us in our friend group sometimes or in our, you know, uh, followers and stuff like that. And sometimes they only do that just to, just to wait to see you have that one big loss, you know what I mean? And, and it's like, you know, those people sometimes, you know, honestly, I've always, you know, said to myself, Oh, I just want to go through and delete a bunch of people who I feel like are in that realm. But I mean, for me, it's like, regardless, uh, you know, I kind of, I kind of don't worry about too much about, you know, wanting to get rid of those people out of my friends and followers or whatever. It's just like, for me, it's just like, yo, I, the thing is that I want to always talk about is just, there's a, there's the human experience that we all, you know, have to have a little bit more deeper conversations about. I love having deeper conversations with people about those types of things. And sometimes you can just see it and observe it from people. And that's, I think it's important, whether it's a positive or a negative thing. Um, but I love that you have that, that, that confidence and then that strong, um, a the strong opinion and fact about yourself and what focus is doing. And I think that's really dope because not a lot of people who I know that are back home, who are still at home or not create, like you said, not creating at a level that you are maybe not have that confidence because some people just don't want to put it out on social media. I, I tell people you have to learn how to just, you have to learn how to put them insecurities away and use the, yep. use them to your advantage. And exactly. just go out and be strong. Um, my last two questions here. <clears throat> what would the young version of yourself think about you today? What would the uh, two questions within that one question? What would the young version of yourself think about who you are today? And also, what would the person, the version about yourself that was maybe in the darkest places, what would that person think about who you are today and what you're doing? Man, honestly, it's it's a wonder that we made it here some days. You know what I mean? Um, dealing with mental health and being a creative and being thrown into that like social media universe and not being able to pull out of it because it sustains your livelihood and because it sustains your artistic creative side. Um, definitely, you know, it, it definitely weighs on you. Um, I would say my younger self would be probably blown away uh, just, just by, uh, physical appearance a little bit, you know, um, I've always been a little edgier. I've always been a little bit, you know, rough around the edges, but, uh, uh, I think, you know, my mom in particular was kind of, kind of floored by some of the tattoos. I think my family was kind of floored by some of the tattoos. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's who I am. It's who I want to be. Um, it's who I'm proud to be. And, creatively you know uh i think all the roads that we took to get here were the roads that we had to take to get here and in those darkest days you know those moments where you just want to give up and give in um that camera in my hand is probably you know one of the driving forces that continued to push me so i would say man Hey, look, Ma, we made it. That's that's coming soon, you know. Uh, yeah. We're 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 continuing to kind of break through those, those ceilings and continuing to kind of grow. And that's all I want, dude. I just I want to continue to grow. 
And that's always kind of been, you know, in the back of my head. Um, I grew up around entrepreneurs. My, my mom's an entrepreneur. Her father was an entrepreneur. Um, so there's kind of always been like that energy around me of, you know, you can, you can do anything that you want in life and to, to be able to like grow through those dark times and know that nothing in life is easy, you know, whether it's personal or work, it doesn't matter. You can, you can face adversity in a nine to five, no different than you can face adversity as an entrepreneur. Um, but I would say, you know, I, I would say my younger self or the self of me that was in some of those darker moments, I'm proud, man. I'm proud that we made it here today. I'm excited for everything that's happening. I don't think I would have ever envisioned that, you know, under 30 that we'd be where we're at right now with some of the stuff that's going on. And I can't wait to see what's next. That's beautiful. I hope this self right here, you know, is blown away by the self that I am in five years. That's beautiful. Honestly. I, yeah. I think that, I think that's the best way to sum up the, the, the entire podcast right there. I think that's amazing. I think that's, it's beautiful that you've got to see yourself grow at this rate and it's only going to get better seeing yourself grow along with like the team that you're building, the family that you're going to build. Um, you know, once again, of course, like congratulations on the mayor. I'm waiting for the wedding. Whenever that's going to happen, let me know. I'll be back in Indiana. Where are you uh, hoping, bro? So it's going to be really intimate and really private. Uh, yeah. Well, regardless, wh- wherever the <laughs> hell, whatever's happening, whatever the celebration is going to be best believe I got to make sure I, I show up and, 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 and uh, give my uh, celebration to you guys as a couple. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I said, everything that you guys are building, it's amazing. So um, to end off this, this, to end off this, please let know, please let everybody know who's listening and watching where to watch your excellence, where they can reach you at on social media, you know, let it, let it, uh, let it be known. Instagram, we got t.focus, P-H-O-C-U-S. And Ashley's is a dot focus. We keep it simple, nice, nice and concise there. Uh, <laughs> focus film on YouTube. Uh, just do a quick YouTube search. You'll find it. You'll find my channel. You'll find uh, anybody who's shot with me. They usually are pretty good about throwing it in there. Um, Facebook focus creations. It's easy, baby. Just find focus. P H O C U S. That's all there is to it. Awesome. That's great. And of course, people, you can also, of course, you know, people can buy uh, merch and stuff from you as well. I didn't really get into that, but people can buy merch. That link is actually on my Instagram bio direct. So sweet, sweet. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Trinity, for being a part of this, this podcast and being a part of this episode. I appreciate you. This is, uh, this is great that we got a chance to catch up like this. And I'm super happy and excited for everything that you got going on. And, and I'm glad that you have continue to to only become much more greater than who you were yesterday so uh keep continuing to do that keep continuing to do excellence and of course for everyone listening and watching you guys already know make sure to subscribe to the excellent podcast subscribe to sw films um and i will see you guys on the next one